Now, water has been an issue mm -hmm. that has been dominating uh, headlines in this country uh, over the past uh, days, weeks and even months. Of course, that severe drought that we're dealing with in much of the country. Well, today, our water ministers got together for a meeting. Here's how, how, here's how our political reporter, Trudy McIntosh, saw the events unfold. Angry farmers flooded to Canberra. Their calls to axe the Murray-Darling Basin plan forced the Water Minister to take action. We are going to get someone independent to undertake a transparent process. Promising to review the water sharing arrangements with the states. We gave those commitments to those farmers right up and down the basin. But just a fortnight later, several states pushed back at a meeting of Water Ministers in Brisbane, refusing to cooperate with the Inspector General Mick Kilty's review. Opening up water sharing arrangements would be opening a Pandora's box. We don't want to be penalised because we manage our water system well. New South Wales, the only state willing to get on board. I think it's important, um, you know, that they have be able to have a look under the bonnet. The Federal Water Minister is vowing to press on, with the review starting as early as next week. If they're so confident, let the sunshine in, have a look at it. The Inspector General conceding the lack of cooperation will now make his job more difficult. If I get to a point where we're unable to find the facts, then I'll, I'll simply uh, shine a light on that. But while a review of the plan has largely been rejected, the Murray-Darling Basin plan itself has survived. All states have agreed to remain at the negotiating table for now, after New South Wales threatened to withdraw from the deal unless more water flowed to irrigators. We are still in the plan, but we have had major wins. New South Wales Water Minister Melinda Pavey has made it clear that her state will not release more water for environmental flows during the drought. That water is simply not there in New South Wales. We've given all that we can. Ms Pavey's comments for the camera angering her South Australian counterpart, a fellow Liberal. New South Wales says one thing in the room and then completely different statements are made in front of TV cameras. States remain at loggerheads over the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, a sign of the fundamental tension that exists within it. They were able to reach some agreement, asking the ACCC to fast-track an investigation looking into foreign ownership and monopolies. This is a $13 billion investment the Australian taxpayer has made. Uh, I think they want some accountability. Trudy McIntosh, Sky News, Canberra. Well, not surprisingly, this story is dominating headlines both in New South Wales and South Australia tomorrow with that stoush going on between the relevant water ministers. If we go to the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald, we see state retreats on water threat is the headline uh, on that masthead. Of course, New South Wales backed down from its threat to withdraw from the Murray-Darling Basin Plan at yesterday's Ministerial Council meeting of Basin States, while Victoria refused to participate in review of water sharing rules that could leave its irrigators worse off. Hailing major wins and major concessions, New South Wales Water Minister Melinda Pavey retreated from repeated threats by her and Nationals leader John Barillaro to exit the $13 billion Basin Plan at the meeting of federal and state water ministers in Brisbane. Now, Lisa, I caught up with uh, Shane Stone, the uh, Drought Coordinator General, last week, uh, and he was saying that uh, he really wanted to see the states uh, sit down and work together to work their way through these issues, but it looks like there's a fair bit of tension in the room there in Brisbane today. It absolutely shows just how much debate is going on and, and how much controversy there is around this issue. Now, you have to stop and think about the farmers who are watching this unfold. And look, you would, you would talk about the farmers in New South Wales and assume that they're actually applauding the fact that they're not going to back down. You, you can't imagine the frustration of, of watching that water go past their property, the drought that they're in, the conditions that they're facing every day. And you watch what's happening in this situation where you've got politician arguing with politician. They just want the water. It's that simple. Well, it's not just in New South Wales they want the water, Dan, also uh, in South Australia, and obviously that's what's causing much of the tension. If we have a look at the front page of the Adelaide Advertiser and the headline uh, on that uh, front page story there on the title says, River on a knife edge with a little uh, badge there, the campaign badge from the advertiser that says, I love the Murray. It, this story says the hard-fought plan to protect the River Murray was last night on a knife edge, as New South Wales said it would pull the plug on its commitment to environmental water. But South Australia Water and Environment Minister David Spears says the Commonwealth is obliged to deliver the flows 
regardless. This is the flip side of that argument, isn't it, Dan? I mean, the farmers in New South Wales want the water. New South Wales wants to keep the water. South Australia wants to keep that water flowing down the Murray. Uh, and, of course, they also want to address... Uh, uh, they don't want to return to a salinity issue they had uh, you know, less than a decade ago as well. So there's obviously um, you know, really there's a further point about the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. Uh, and, and, and Lisa makes a good point about the fact that many of the farmers that use that water do so efficiently. For South Australia, there is that environmental concern. But you know, bottom line is that you know, we do need longer term a, a very frank conversation about water infrastructure, uh, you know, like actually getting further flows into the actual basin plan and you know, into the system more broadly. But uh, South Australia has, for a long time, you know, faced that issue with salinity, particularly at the mouth of the Murray uh, River. So, again, it's really you know, two basically uh, opposing forces. And, and, again, simply the fact is we are dealing with a massive drought which really overshadows everything in terms of being able to come up with solutions uh, for the river system, which is at, like the lifeblood of so much of not only the agriculture but indeed uh, the environment in this part of the country. Yeah, you touch on another point there that's interesting and that is of course we are in this drought at the moment but one day that drought's going to break and uh, questions being asked already about what actually happens when it does and whether we can come up with a better water management plan to ensure that we capture uh, some of that water when we do see uh, some of those flood events. Of course uh, it's hard to believe but uh, a lot of the people who are dealing with drought conditions now in Queensland are the same ones who earlier this year uh, were dealing with the effects of those floods uh, you know, that we saw earlier on. So, I mean, it really does uh, highlight that this is a country of droughts and flooding rains. We might